Hi! This is a short intro to a recipe I'm going to show you. I made, I, I prepared a couple of days ago, well, a few more days than a couple. And I am so literal, sometimes I would bang, bang my head against the wall. But I don't have walls, so that's good. Um, stay tuned to the end of the video for the results to see if it was a fantastic success or an epic failure. So check the end of the video to learn how it went. We are going to prepare pesto pasta. My name is Adriana and this is Many Roads, No Roads. We are going to prepare one of my favorite sauces, pesto. Hey, and we are going to have pasta with pesto. Yeah, ma cosa dire? As you can see, I have a new light because sometimes it gets, even if it is sunny outside, I have most of my windows covered because I like it that way. And it gets dark in here. So now we have a light. And let me tell you the story of these little two beings that are next to me. This is English thyme, thyme and this is basil. I bought this once in Tucson when I was there in February for the meetup, for the Ironwood meetup. And I had to go to the Home Depot to get something and I wandered into their garden area and I, I thought, oh, it would be so nice to have some herbs in the van. Uh, no, it hasn't been nice. It has been a nightmare. Mostly because they require water every day, which is not a problem. You just water them and that's it. But then you have to take them outside so they are in the sun and the air. But if it is too windy, you have to bring them inside. You put them behind the windshield and sometimes that is too hot for them and then you put them on a seat but of course I mean they take space Lua is kind of jealous of them so if I put it in here she's going to if it isn't on her way she's going to kind of object to the presence of the plant so it has been too complicated I will from now on, if I need fresh herbs, I will buy them from the supermarket when I buy my groceries, and that's it. So, what I will do is, I will cut the thyme in big chunks, like this, and all these branches, I will put them on a paper towel, and I will let them dry because you can still use them when they are dry and it's delicious on meats like if you make a stew or a pot roast or something like that thyme is the perfect uh, herb to go with meat so i am going to cut the aroma is fantastic so i'm going to cut all the thyme and put it on a, a paper towel so it's going to be around for a few days, two or three or four days. I will put it outside if it is not windy, so the sun helps. And, um, and that's it. So I will use it dry. And I am going to cut all these basil, because that is what we are going to use for the pesto today. So I'll bring you back uh, in, in a few minutes when I have done all of that and got rid of the little pot and we will start preparing pesto. So, okay, I took care of the thyme. I got a big bunch, um, wrapped it in paper towels, made a little package, left it there. So I, in the next two or three days it will dry up and I will preserve it in a little container or something 
to use as a as an herb on something. Lua, of course, she has she hears me talking and she has to be around. And since she's around, she decides to eat some more and drink some more water. So I'm sorry, it's Lua. So the the basil it was not too much but i'm going to leave it in this bowl uh, in water so it rinses up a little bit because i already had some water there so in case there is a little dust it comes out but we are not going to use it just yet because first we have to use uh, something else to start with the garlic and i hope you love garlic because pesto without garlic a friend of mine says pesto without garlic is like life without love that's that's good and powerful i'll see you in a minute one of the ways the traditional way of making pesto is in one of those big marble mortars of course i don't have the capacity to transport one of those just for those days when I want to have pesto uh, and they're so heavy so I got this small one of course from Amazon it is made of granite so and it's still very heavy and it has the I don't even know the name of this the pesto, pesto something like this and I haven't used them yet. It comes with this silicone mat that you can put down there so it is in place. And it comes with a little spoon to collect everything from there and then to clean it. I think it is just super cute. And they come in different colors. So first of all, we are going to wash this. And you know how I do my dishes. I just spray them with pure vodka uh, because it disinfects, it cleans, it smells like vodka and it removes grease if, if you're cleaning something that was greasy and in this case since we don't know where these things have been it disinfects everything. I like that. And then I just dry it up with a paper towel and we are almost ready to go. I love playing with these little things. They're so teeny. I mean, the, the whole thing is so cute. If you don't have one of these at home, eh, if you live in a house, I mean, and you don't have a mortar, you can totally make the pesto in a, in a blender or in a food processor and uh, it's the same thing. But I like the idea of using um, a mortar. I, it's the traditional thing, it is in my blood somewhere. Um, somehow diluted but it is there and it's nice because it is coarse inside so you know it's going to help better let's bring the ingredients in first I wanted to show you this beautiful little box I'm going to put a link to all these fancy teeny little things uh, in the description of this video in case you want one of them the light the mortar this box is amazing because I love garlic. I love garlic. But having garlic in a, a little space like this, it would smell. And you would come in here, what is happening? Where is the garlic? You know, that kind of thing. So I got this um, little plastic box. It's made of acrylic. And it's airtight so the garlic in here doesn't smell out so we are going to open and get some garlic out of here I love garlic so I am going to use a 
fair amount. Let's say two big cloves. Okay. I always have baby wipes handy. Uh, the way of not getting your fingers smell like garlic for hours, <clears throat> unfortunately I cannot do it here, is just putting your fingers under the faucet, the running water, and just let it run for half a minute and it goes away. If you rub, because the garlic has oils, if you rub it, you send it in the skin so it's going to be smelly. Garlic is a science. So let's crush the cloves of garlic. Again, even if it is just a little one, put some garlic in your pesto and you're going to have a lot of joy in your life. Where are you? Here. Mm -mm -mm. I don't think this is enough at all. I like it more garlicky. Even though I don't have too much basil, I don't know. Garlic is garlic. It's amazing. Do you like garlic? I love garlic. So good. The best pizza sauce, believe me, just choose a can of your favorite tomato. Uh, those tomatoes that come in cubes or something. Put it in a bowl, add some garlic and some marjoram or oregano and olive oil and salt. That's it. Let it rest for a little bit. Oh, so good. I don't like those uh, pizza sauces that come in a jar. They, they have such a fake flavor. I'm going to put the rest of the garlic there because that is going to be destroyed in the mortar. And then I am going to clean this and put it in a safe place again. I am going to add to the garlic in there a little bit of pink salt. I recently bought blue salt and a Scandinavian salt um, that comes with herbs. I don't want to use either of them because I want to try them first. But any of those dirty salts are healthier for, for you than the regular white salt. Because regular white refined salt, they took the magnesium out of that and now you are deficient in magnesium. So you have to buy that magnesium in capsules or something and you pay a hundred times the price uh, because you need magnesium in your system. So when you buy electrolytes and all of that, that there goes the magnesium they took out of your refined salt. So buy dirty salt, pink, blue, gray, any color of salt. So let's add some salt because it will help with the grinding process of the whole thing. Good. Extra virgin olive oil. And just if you can choose the one that says first cold press. That is they pressed the olives and this is the first oil that came out of that. After that they started adding chemicals and things to the rest, to the pulp that is left, to get some more oil. And that is the one you buy that says a light taste or things like that. Uh, yeah, it has been altered and they can make it taste any way they want. So if you can, uh, please get the first cold press, extra virgin olive oil. That's your best chance of getting something really healthy. So let's start killing the garlic with our little pestle. It feels like you're doing something really relevant with your life, you know. <laughs> I love it. And at this 
point nothing magical is happening i mean it's just the garlic looking smashed but it's a good thing we pressed it first so it's easier this thing about cooking something new in the van for the first time and putting it out there not easy i am getting excited so i'm going to get rid of my jacket it was cold a few minutes ago so yay i am not made to work with small little things i am too rough You have to kill them. You have to push and push and try to kill it until you make a fine paste out of it. Of course, it is simpler if you use a, a food processor or a blender. But guess what? My great-grandmother, somewhere up in the hills, the mountains in Italy, she would go outside, I suppose, and grab basil by the handful and bring it in and just press it and push it and slam it like this for a long while. If she was very lucky, she would have one of the bambino, eh? Bambino, viene qui! And she would use one of her kids to do this part of the job. I don't care if some pieces are a little larger. It's just like getting a, a larger leaf of basil on your margarita pizza. It's okay. It will be delightful anyway. So now that we have hammered and tortured the basil and the garlic together. I am going to add a little bit of oil. I am going to put some Parmesan cheese here because it is, if you, if you are going to do it at home, if you have a regular kitchen, get a big nice piece of Parmesan cheese. If you can get Grana Padano, of course, that is the mother of all cheeses for these kind of things. Delicious, delicious hard cheese. I don't need a blender. I just need to destroy this with all my might. And I forgot I'd run out of almonds. The nuts for a good pesto is first place, undoubtedly the most traditional way, pine nuts. If you don't have pine nuts, I have prepared it many times with just walnuts because they are nice and creamy. Uh, I was going to make them with almonds because I thought that is what I had, but I ran out of them. So I'm going to use a few cashews, but just a few because they have a particular um, cashew flavor. And I don't want this to be a, a cashew pesto. I, I want it to be a basil pesto, which is the best. But the recipe calls for nuts, and we are adding some nuts. So I am happy to report it is becoming a paste, which is the ideal thing. And I am going to add... This little spoon is going to work perfect to bring everything down there. I'm going to add more cheese and more olive oil uh, at the end to give it the perfect consistency because it has to be a sauce but it has to be a little liquid too just just so it's juicy and the olive oil is what does that but give me one second we're almost there I am going to use miracle noodles in this case spaghetti um, they are kind of funny but they are this ones in particular three grams of carbs minus two grams of fiber it's only one carb for the whole thing 
uh, they don't have soy, they don't have gluten, they don't have dairy, no grain, no sugar, no sodium. So they may not be the real thing, by far they are not, but they are very healthy. So the only thing is you have to rinse them twice or three times, twice or thrice, and, uh, and then you can put the pesto sauce on top. What I will do is I will give them a little uh, warm up in the cast iron with a little bit of olive oil so they warm up and then I will put them on a plate with the pesto sauce on top and a lot more cheese because the recipe calls for a lot more cheese to your taste but I like it with a lot. So I'll see you again when I have that ready to eat. I should have chopped the basil and uh, a little bit more so it wouldn't be that complicated. I, I, I am sure the flavor is going to be fantastic. I love my little uh, mortar so I'm going to enjoy an almost traditional pesto. It is not the traditional thing because we are not in Italy and I am a nomad. My great-grandmother was for sure probably not a nomad but uh, a person that lived in her house every day cooking for the family and that is what it was in those days. So of course I recommend you add a lot more cheese, a lot more olive oil so you have a delicious sauce. I tell you, I, I wish I could send you a little capsule with the smell of this. The aroma is absolutely fantastic and I will tell you in half a minute what it tastes like but I am, my, my mouth is watering. Mm. It smells like glory. Oh, come on, spaghetti. Don't make it difficult. Oh, my goodness. So flavorful. Mm. My brain is exploding. I wish I could have normal spaghetti, you know, because the conja noodles are a little chewy. The pesto is magnificent. And let me tell you, it was a fantastic, epic failure. What, I, what you saw of me uh, trying the first bites was actually real. I was transported to Italy. The flavor of the basil with the garlic is a geniality. Nobody understands unless you like pesto. Uh, but those concha noodles, they should be banned from any normal person's diet. They are zero carb, yes, but they are horrible, horrible. So after the second or third bite, when the exhilaration of, yay, I am eating pesto, went away, the only thing my brain was looking for was real pasta. And it didn't find it. It didn't, it was not there. It was just that crunchy jellyfish the concha noodles are. I got rid of the three or four packages I had, I got rid of them. They are disgusting. But I was happy for a couple of bites because I had basil and garlic, which I can do any day now. But I also got rid of my mortar, that beautiful teeny little mortar. I got rid of it, I donated it because it was so complicated and it took a lot of effort to prepare, to mush those leaves. 
and they were not totally integrated like when you prepare it in a blender. My great grandmother was probably very upset with me. So, epic failure! <laughs> Thank you for being here. If you have fun watching me fail at making pesto, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We nomads have too much time in our hands and we try crazy things. So, as crazy as making pesto in a van, uh, someday we'll have a mini, mini, mini small food processor and I will make it right. Thank you very much for being here. Have a beautiful day. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>